contraption is known as Barton's Pendulum because Barton was the one who came up with this setup. Hey there! My name is Miss Hu, also known as Teacher Zian, and I'm a physics teacher by day, dance teacher by night. However, in this video, we are going to focus on physics, and I will show you how to make your own Barton's Pendulum apparatus to study resonance in your own home. So what do we need in order to set up Barton's Pendulum? Actually, it's not very much. You definitely need uh, some string, but try to get thread that is flexible. Um, so that it's easier for the energy to be transferred from one pendulum to another. Try not to use like raffia string or something that's very stiff like twine because what happens then is they're not very flexible so it makes it harder for the energy to be transferred from one pendulum to another. Also, you do need some objects that will act as uh, pendulum bobs. Now, I myself, I don't have pendulum bobs. Like, who buys pendulum bobs and keeps them at home unless you're some physics freak, right? Now, I love physics, but I'm not that kind of physics freak. So, I'm just going to show you how you can create your own pendulums using everyday objects. So, you can use erasers. You can also use uh, very light objects like, you know, toy balls or something. In my case, I'm just going to be using a whole bunch of keys. Why? Because they've got the little holes on top which makes it a lot easier for us to tie the string right through. You also need two stands as your support to be able to secure the string that goes across like your mini bridge. So if you have two retard stands, please go ahead and use them. Um, like I said, I'm not that kind of a freak, so I'm going to show you how you can just use stools. So my stools have holes in them so that a way I can just tie the string through the hole and that will be quite secure. You need to find something that will be able to secure that bridge because if you tie, let's say, just to a leg of the stool or a chair or a table and as the pendulum starts swinging and the string starts slipping down, a little bit difficult. So I'm going to be using two stools and I am too lazy to remove the stool covers completely so I'm just going to leave the stool covers hanging at the side here, okay? By the way, I'm sitting on the floor because it's easier for me to work with the stools here. Don't judge, you'll be sitting on the floor too when you're setting this up. So what I have here, I've got a bunch of keys and I've picked six very similar looking keys but one significantly different because this key is going to be the control pendulum. You don't really need this many keys, you can work with maybe just two or three but since I have six keys, I'll just use all six of them. By the way, do you actually need to use, you know, identical looking keys? You actually don't. You can have six very different objects and it will still work perfectly fine. Because Barton's pendulum in this case would rely on the length of the pendulum and not the mass or volume or size. So first things first, what we need to do is we need to make the keys into pendulums. And how to do that is to take your string or thread and tie it through the hole uh, of the keys in order to create the pendulum. Now, of course, if you are using different objects, uh, you will need to find a way to secure the thread or string to the respective objects uh, to make them into a pendulum. Um, this is why I want to use keys because it's a lot easier. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of failing at this. I hope you're doing a better job than I am. There we go. All right, okay. So we're going to do this for each of the keys. Now, how long should the uh, thread B, well, you don't really have to measure them out. It's not an exact science and it's, we're not going to take a ruler and measure it out. Um, but here's what we're going to do and I'll, sh I'll show you shortly. Sharpen my cutter. And ta-da! I have managed to tie all the seven keys to strings successfully to make seven different pendulums. Now, let's talk about the length of the pendulums. The length, like I said, it's not mass, so you don't really have to measure it so exact. So here's what we want. We want the six pendulums here, not including the control, the six pendulums here to have different lengths. So this should have a shorter length, followed by th this, 
this, so on and so forth. But we have to make sure that at least one of these pendulums have the same length as the control pendulum. Now, don't start measuring it out because here's what's going to happen. You're going to tie the top of all these pendulums to a string. The string in question would be the same piece of thread that we're going to tie across. Now, don't tie it yet. What we'll do is we'll make this string the bridge between the two stools. So what we'll do now is we will tie that string um, across the two stools to make it into a bridge. Make sure that the stools are far enough so that we can hang all the pendulums in between comfortably because you don't want the pendulums to start clashing into each other. So I'm going to tie one of the strings this way through the hole because, you know, let's make life a little bit easier. Why make life so difficult? Find a way to make the string secure without using additional stuff, right? Like getting cellophane tape or something like that. Yeah, so keeping this really simple. Uh, so that's why I'm tying it through the hole. Now, if your stool doesn't have a hole, then you do have to find a way to secure the string so that the string doesn't um, slide up or down. And we're going to tie it across to the other side um, in the same way. Okay, so now we've kind of got the string uh, tied between the stools um, as a little bit of a bridge over here, if you can see. We've got the string tied in between here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take the pendulums that we have already prepared and we're going to tie them along this bridge. So of course when you're tying the pendulums, make sure they're not too long because if they're too long and they start hitting the ground instead, that kind of fails. All right, so use a bit of logic, all right? Make sure that your pendulum is high enough so that it can swing so it's not longer than the height of your, your support, okay? So remember that for all the other pendulums that are not the control, we want them to have different lengths. So the first one should be short, then the second one gets longer and longer, uh, all the way down to um, the six pendulums that we have uh, set up. But make sure that at least one of the pendulums that we are tying have the same length as the control pendulum. Does it matter which pendulum matches the length of the control? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it does not matter. Uh, take your pick, whichever pendulum that makes you happy. Okay, so as you can see, I already have my pendulums all tight and uh, set up. Also, what you want to make sure of is that the pendulums are spaced out. They shouldn't be glumped up together, um, as could possibly happen if they are, uh, if the string stacks too much. You want to make sure that the bridge is kind of taut enough so that the pendulums can stay at their spaces respectively. There's also a lot of excess string over here, so I'm just going to trim off so that it looks a lot neater. Because otherwise, it doesn't look uh, very sciencey. So there we go, we have our buttons pendulum set up. So one thing to remember, of course, is that when we are setting up the buttons pendulum, everything must be of string. You cannot use something that's rigid for the bridge. So for example, if you're like, oh, but teacher, it's so hard to tie the string onto another string, it keeps moving apart. Can't we just use something like, you know, maybe like a chopstick? No, cannot. You need the string to be flexible because what happens is during the uh, experiments, we need the control pendulum to be transferring its frequency of oscillation to the other pendulums. And something that's rigid cannot be transferring anything, okay? So, how do we do this experiment? Okay, here's what, what's going to happen. We're going to use a control pendulum. We're going to oscillate it not this way. You're not trying to make the keys hit each other, okay? That's not the aim. What you want to do is you want to have the control pendulum oscillate perpendicular to the string. So we're going to displace it this way and we're going to let it oscillate this way. And what's going to happen is you're going to see the rest of the pendulums oscillating. Okay, again, a closer look. We're going to make this control pendulum oscillate this way. Don't lift it up. You're not trying to, you know, create a wrecking ball, okay? Just a slight displacement, let go. And you'll see the rest of the pendulums oscillating. Now, if you observe, 
there is one pendulum that's oscillating with the largest amplitude. And then let's take a closer look. Ooh, can you see that the control pendulum and that pendulum have kind of the same length? <sighs> let's watch that again. going on here and how is Barton's pendulum able to explain resonance? So when we displace a control pendulum, we're not giving any external energy. We displace it enough so that it starts to oscillate on its own and when this happens, it's oscillating with its own natural frequency. Now because the control pendulum is connected to all the other pendulums via the string, this string, like I said, it's flexible, um, so it allows for the transfer of energy from one pendulum to the rest. Because the control pendulum is the one that is moving, it is going to start supplying energy to all the other pendulums, making the other pendulums all oscillate as well. And what you'll find is all the other pendulums are forced to oscillate because now there is an external energy being supplied by the control pendulum. So these pendulums are oscillating with forced frequency because they're being forced, they're being forced to oscillate by this, this fuller, this pendulum. So this pendulum, natural frequency, the rest of it, forced frequency. And all of these pendulums are forced to oscillate with the same frequency as this original pendulum. Kind of makes sense, right? If this pendulum is you know, oscillating with a particular frequency and it starts forcing the others to oscillate, all of them have to oscillate with the same frequency. You can't expect this, this pendulum, let's say, you know, at 10 hertz to suddenly, oh, 2 hertz, 5 hertz, you know, 8 hertz, that doesn't make sense. If it's going to oscillate with 10 hertz, the rest have to oscillate with 10 hertz. Now, what happens is, you must remember that every pendulum has its own value of natural frequency. The length of the pendulum is what determines its frequency, which means that all these pendulums, because they have different lengths, therefore, they all have different values of natural frequency. But because this particular pendulum has the same length as this control pendulum, its natural frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the control pendulum. But this pendulum is swinging with forced frequency. This fella forced this fella to oscillate. Okay, this fella actually forced everyone to oscillate. But because this fella has the same natural frequency, same, same, it gets the most energy. It's like because they're in sync, that what happens is, hey, you and I, we are same, same. So, same thing, fuller will give the most energy and that's why this pendulum will swing with the biggest amplitude. And because it swings the biggest amplitude, that's why you can see it looks as if this is only making this pendulum oscillate, but it's not. All the others are oscillating as well. Maybe not as obvious, but they are. The closer the lengths are to the original control pendulum, the larger its amplitude would be. That's why you can see the rest are kind of oscillating. But the bigger the difference of the length, the smaller its amplitude. The closer, yeah, the bigger the amplitude would be. So that's resonance, which means that among all these six pendulums, this pendulum is the one that is undergoing resonance or resonating because it's being forced to oscillate where the force frequency is equal to its natural frequency. So this is how Barton's pendulum is able to show us the concept of resonance. To find out more about the applications or the effects of resonance, do check out the rest of the videos in this playlist. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more experiments you can do at home or just to learn about physics for fun.